Okay, this week is Pasha's Vaschanan, the second uh, Pasha of Shmei, of Dvarim. And I want to spend time on, in this week's Pasha, we have the first Pasha of the Shema. The first paragraph of Shema from Shema Yisrael, Vahavta, and until Almazuzis Beisach of Yisharecha. Really, this first paragraph you can give probably 30 Shiuraman. But we're going to just pick a few things uh, and discuss them. Some short, interesting words, like they say, about the Shema and the deeper meaning of what it is. We know the mitzvah of Shema is, if it says in the, Shema, in the Shema itself, in this week's parsha. when do you read, need to read the Shema? The Shach B'cha, when you go to sleep, or the and when you get up. Uh, in the Mishnah, in the beginning of the Mar Brachis, uh, Beishame took the Pasuk literal. The Shach B'cha means when you lay down. So Beishame said the night Shema, you have to do laying down. The morning Shema, the Torah says, Uvu Kumecho, which literally means when you stand up. So according to Beishame, the morning Shema, you have to say standing. Beis Hillel said, no, that's not what the Pasuk means. The Pasuk means when you go to sleep, the time you go to sleep, meaning at night, and at the time you get up, which is in the day. But in a deeper sense, what is the Shema? The Shema is like, The Shema is proclaiming God's greatness, God's unity, God's sovereignty, everything is Hashem, as somebody on thing always likes to say, the only thing that exists is Hashem himself. So the Mufashim explain, they bring down a very interesting, simple, but interesting concept. In a person's life, there's night and day. Night represents the difficulties of life. When these things are dark, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, physically, Shachwacha means at night when things are dark, things are difficult. The Pasik says, even when things are tough, even when things are good, you need to re- say the Shema. You need to understand that everything is coming from Hashem, and if everything is coming from Hashem, as bad as it is, we're still screaming out Hashem Akin Hashem Achod, as everybody knows. Uh, that the Jews went to the gas chambers and then the, the, the time of the Nazis in Machshmam, they went to, to, their, to their death sentences with Shema Yisrael on their lips. So there's an union of saying the Shema at night, which represents the time of darkness in the world when things are difficult. You need to proclaim, you know, through trials and tribulations, we proclaim, proclaim Hashem Elokein Hashem Achod. And the same time when things are day, what does it mean day? Things are good, things are great, things are rosy. Everything is shining, everything is light, everything is giving. Even then a person could think, okay, listen, the Pasik says no. No matter in the difficult times you need to say the Shema, or whether it's in the good times you need to say the Shema. The first Pasik of Shema, by the way, it's interesting, the first, and we'll get to this in a minute, the first Mishnah, of the entire oral Torah begins with the Mishnah, May Masay Kerin as a Shema Ba'arden. When do you start saying the Shema in the evening? And then it goes into the day Shema. And the commentaries explain why does the whole oral Torah begin with the myths of saying Shema at night? And they explain because the first practical mitzvah a boy does when he becomes bar mitzvah is a mitzvah of Shema. It becomes becomes bar mitzvah at night. The first mitzvah he has is the biblical mitzvah. Davening is rabbinical, biblical, questionable. But the first biblical mitzvah he does in a practical way is the mitzvah of reciting the Shema. And in fact, the Mephoshim say that when it says in the Pasuk, in Shema, the Dibartabam, you should speak 
in them, meaning in the words of Tatum. The commentaries say, what does it mean that the Barta bum? Bum is base and mem. Base is stands for Bereshis Bara Elohim, the opening sentence of the written Taita, which is in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Base and Mem represents the first Mishnah of the oral Taita, which is Me'imase From when on do you read the Shema in the evening? So therefore, when it says in the Pasuk that the Barta Bum speak in them in words of Taita. It refers to the written Taita, the base for Bereshit Baralikim, and the Mem for Meimosikin Seshma, when uh, which represents the oral Taita. Next thing is like this: the Pasik starts Shema Yisro with a Shin, and the Pasik ends Shema Yisro Hashem Alokenu Hashem Echad. Right? Shema Yisro, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It begins with a shin and ends with a dalid. Shin dalid is the word shade, not a window shade, but in Hebrew, the shadim, the devils and the demons are called shadim or shade singular. It says in the Chazal tell us that when a person lames Krishna at night and during the day, it actually protects us from the demons and the devils that existed. In the time of the Gemara, the devils and demons were rampant. The Shadim actually existed in the time of the Gemara. And then later on, at the end of the era of the Gemara, they banned them, the rabbis banned them from human uh, places. And then later on in history, the Badim Baal Shem Tev, which was before the Yisrael Baal Shem Tev, banned them completely from earth. So today there's no more shadim. But years ago, there were, they had a lot, in the time of the Gemara, there's a lot of stories of the Gemara, the encounters the rabbis of the Gemara had with the demons and the devils, the, with the shadim. So the Pasuk, the Chazal tell us that Shema begins with a shin and ends with a dalid to teach us that when you read the Shema properly at night and in the morning, the shadim, the demons, and the devils get away. They leave you. Another interesting thing, which is well known, but Janus and Ben Uziel, who is the greatest student of Hillel, by the way, the Gemara says, he says, he quotes a Medrash. And the Medrash says, we know that before Yaakov Avinu passed away, he told Hashem, yes, Hashem, give me a, a sign that I want to bless my children before I die. Until Avram Avinu, I mean, until Avram Avinu, there was no aging in the world. Avram Avinu was the first one to age because it says Avram Zakein. Avram became old. So the Gemara says, Ad Avram Lahaya Zikna. Until Avram Avinu, there was no aging. What was the problem? Avram came to Hashem and said, My son Yitzchak looks exactly like me. I don't have any more white hair than he does. So nobody can tell the difference between me and him. So Hashem said, okay, we're going to start the aging process. So what happened? Avram was the first one to become old. And then the Gemara says that until Yaakov Avinu, nobody was sick. How did a person die? The time came to pass away. They sneezed. Then the Shama left through the nose the way it went in. When Adam Manisha was created, the Pasuk says, Vayipach ba'apov, Hashem blew into other meditions and Hashemah through the nose. So how did the people die? They sneezed and Hashemah left through the nose and that was it, they died. They were never sick. They were never, until Abraham, there was no aging. Yaakov Avinu wanted to bless his children before he died. He came to Hashem and he said, I want to know before I die. You can't just die and not bless my children. So Hashem made him sick. And therefore it says in Pasha's Vayichi, in Avicha Chayla, your father, Yosef was told his father is sick, and therefore he was the first one to be sick. So when Yaakov Avinu got sick, he wanted to bless his children. And Rashi says he wanted to tell him when Mashiach was going to come. And the Shekhinah left him. The Shekhinah left him. 
Yaakov Avinu thought, my children who lived in Egypt are not worthy of being blessed. Obviously, they're sinners. Maybe they believe in other gods. So when Yaakov Avinu said this to the children, to the children, she said to him, Shema Yisrael, Yaakov's name was also Yisrael, hear Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, it's our God, just like it's yours. It's one God. So when Yaakov heard that, he said, Baruch Shem Kavod Malchus Eloelam Vod. May the name of God be blessed forever and ever. And because of that, the Gemara discusses a very interesting thing. The Gemara says, the Gemara has a dilemma. Should we say, now but we in our Shema, we say Shema, Baruch Shem Kavod Malchus Eloelam Vod, and then we start with Yohafta. In the Chumash, there's no Baruch Shem. What's the origin of Baruch Shem? Yaakov Avinu was the one that said it. Another opinion says, when Moshe Rabbeinu went on the Har Sinai, he heard the angels saying it, and he stole it from them. But the Gemara says, so what do we do? It doesn't say in the Chumash, Baruch Shem. When the children said to Yaakov, Shema Yisrael Hashem, Malkin Hashem Achod, Yaakov said to them, said out loud, Bar- blessed is God, you know, that my children are tzaddikim. So the Gemara said, what should we do? To not to say it, but Yaakov Avinu said it. To say it, but it doesn't say in the Torah. So therefore, the Gemara says, you know what? We say it quietly. And Chassidus brings down, the Rebbe brings down, in, in Kudus and Yonish of I believe it is, that in the first base of Migdash, they didn't say Baruch Shem. In the first base of Migdash, they were able to be so great, and maybe we'll get into it later tonight, later in the class. They were so great, they were able to go straight from Shema Hashem Echod to the Ohafta. And we're not that great, we need Baruch Shem, Kved Machos, a little bit. Okay, now, if you look in a Siddur, if you look in a Chumash, preferably a Chumash, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkein Hashem Echod, the Shema, I'm sorry, the Ayin of Shema is big, and the Dalit of Echod is big. Even the Sefer Torah, the ayin of Shema is bigger than a regular letter, and the Dalit of Echod is also bigger than a bigger letter. In fact, I mentioned this many times in Shul, and in back of Rambam Laom, he goes back and mentions all the psukim. We have, this time to go off for a second, it's very interesting. We have normal letters in Teda, normal size letters. Sometimes we have big letters, and sometimes we have small little letters. Throughout the 24 books of scriptures, for the, throughout the 24 books of Tanakh, there is a whole olive base of big letters, and there is an entire olive base of small letters. You know, throughout Tanakh, there's a big olive base, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav, all the way to Tav and Sof. And there's a, all little letters also. Like the phrase, the first letter in Chumash Beis is big. Okay? The Dalid of, of Shema, of Achad is big. The Ayin of Shema is big. But what is this Ayin Dalid that's big? What is the Ayin Dalid that's big? So the Mephoshim say, Ayin Dalid is can be read both ways, but the first way you read it is Ayin Dalid is aid, which means a witness, testimony. Chassidus explains that when a person says the Shema, and soon we're going to get into the actual meaning of the Pasik. When you say Shema, you're actually testifying that Hashem created the world. And therefore, the world is really nothing compared to Hashem. And in fact, there's a Pasik, wherever it is, that says, Hashem says to the Jewish people, Atem Eidai, you are my witnesses. Now, what does that mean? Think for a second. Hashem says to the Jewish people, you guys are my witnesses. What does that mean? 
So many Maimarim and Sichis, the Rebbe Rabbeim explain, what is the purpose of a witness? What is the purpose of testimony? The purpose of a witness, like the Gemara has the expression, Milsa David Lagluye, something that is revealed or will become revealed, you don't need testimony for it. Most witnesses, most of the time, most testimony of witnesses is to verify, or in other language, to reveal something that happened. I lent you a thousand dollars, you can deny it. If I have witnesses that I lent you, they sign on the document, what does that do? The witnesses reveal that the loan took place. If two witnesses testify that a murder happened, so what do they do? They don't make the murder happen. The witnesses by their testimony reveals to the court something that happened. So the whole concept of testimony of what's called an aid, a witness, or aidus, which is the testimony, is to reveal something which is hidden. That's the concept of a witness, of testimony. When the Pasik says, and this is what Shema Yisrael aid, what does it mean, Shema Yisrael aid? What does it mean, the Pasik, when they say, Atem Eida, you are my witnesses, you are my aidim? It means very simple. What, do, what is the function of a Jew? The role, purpose, function of a Jew is to reveal godliness in the world. That's the purpose of a Jew. Atem Eidai, you are my witnesses. What does it mean, witnesses? We're not, we're not testifying for Hashem. Hashem doesn't need a testimony. What does it mean, Atem Eidai? It means very simple. God created the world. The world is God. God is the world. Hashem is everything. Ain't old Milvada. There's only God. Nothing else exists. Who reveals that? Look at the world. You don't see that. You don't see open godliness. The greatness of Avram Avinu was at the age of three. He recognized that there is a God in the world. But that was his greatness. That's why he became the first Jew. But you and I, or any other human being, looks out in the world, you don't see godliness. It's there. Without godliness, the world doesn't exist. What is Hashem? So what does it mean? What is the Jew? What's the role of a Jew? The role of the Jew is to make a dwelling place for God in the world. To make this world holy. How does a Jew make this world holy? Very simple. You do a mitzvah, you learn Torah, you daven, you pray, you do everything. What Hashem wants us to do, what are we accomplishing? We're revealing godliness in the world. That is the concept of the Beis HaMikdash. When the temple was this, before, when the, uh, Shlomo HaMelech finished the first Beis HaMikdash, the first temple, Shlomo HaMelech said to God, it's a pasuk in Melachim. Halei hashemayim ushmei hashemayim lo yechal kolucha la'at ki abayis says that. Basically, what does Shlomo Melch say, God? In simple meaning of the pasuk, Shlomo Melch said to God, "I don't understand. The universe is not big enough for you. This house is going to be big enough for you. Hashemayim ushmei hashemayim the heavens and everything else in the in the heavens, meaning the entire universe." Lo yechal kolucha cannot physically handle you. The afki abayis says that, and this home will, this building, how big was the building? Beis Hamikdash. What's the answer? Shlomo Melch knew the answer. He didn't say it as a question and for an answer. He was a rhetorical statement. Shlomo Melch said, "The Jews by building the Beis Hamikdash, by doing." The Karbanis in the base of Migdash, doing what Hashem told them to do in the temple, in the base of Migdash. That was the place where God was revealed. Why? Ten miracles, constantly picky of us, fifth chapter. There are ten constant miracles in the base of Migdash. 
What is a miracle? A revelation of godliness. What does it mean, Atem Eidai? When the Jew says Shema, the big ayin of the end of the last letter of the first word, and Echod, the big dalid, which is the last letter of the last word, is Eid. What does it mean? When the Jew says Shema and proclaims Hashem Echod, that it's all about God, it's all God, everything is God, that is a testimony that Hashem is existing. But you can read the word the opposite way too. Just like you could read it Ayin Dalid, you could read it Dayan Dalit Ayin, which means Da to know. What does it mean, Da to know? We were gonna learn if, if you would Wednesday night, if you would have the Tanya class, you would learn the end of Paragimel, would learn the way the Altarebbe explains Das. Da means to know. It doesn't mean to understand. It doesn't mean to have wisdom. What is Das? Dr. is going to explain what we're going to learn next time in Tanya. Das comes from the word Adam Yoda es Chava. When it says Avram, Adam Elisha lived with Chava and had babies. What does it use the expression? Yoda, he knew her. What does the word das mean? What does knowing mean? You connect to it. You feel it. I can know something is wrong. I can know something is wrong, but I'll do it anyway. Why? I can make a big lecture about it. If you said many times, how many doctors smoke and eat unhealthy and do everything that they will give you a whole lecture about why it's not healthy to do. Why, why are they doing it? Because they know it, but they don't feel it. When you feel it, it's something else. It's a Rashi in the beginning of Pasha Sachri Meis. And Rashi over there gives in the end an example of a doctor, comes into the patient, says, don't eat this food, because if you eat it, you'll die. Okay, they'll either eat it or not eat it. But if the person had a relative that died from that illness and the doctor says to the patient, don't eat the food because you'll die like your parent died, like your friend died, it's a whole different story. Then I don't know it's wrong. I feel it's wrong. When the Jew says, Shema Yisrael, Shema Lokein Hashem Achad. And before we go into the meditation of what that actually is, the Pasik is saying, it's not enough to understand it and say Shema. By the way, Shema doesn't mean hear, O Israel, hear with your ears. Shema means understand. Shema in Torah doesn't mean hear. Hear means understand. What does it mean, Shema Yisrael? A Jew should understand Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Achod, the God is one. But the Pasuk says it's not enough to understand it. You need to feel it. You need to feel God's existence. When you feel God's existence, you don't sin. So it means aid. The Jew is a witness and testifying and revealing godliness in the world. And at the same time, the Pasuk says, Da es avicha. You're supposed to know God. And then the Pasuk says, Then you'll serve him with a full heart. Because in order to serve God properly, it's not enough to know what's right and wrong. It's important to feel what's right and wrong. And therefore the Torah uses the word da. Okay, now, the first passage of Shema says, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Achad. A lot of God's name in this passage. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, God is our God, Hashem Achad, God is one. Simple meaning of the Pasik is what Rashi says in Chumash. Rashi in this Pasik in Chumash in Parshas Vazchan in this week's Parsha. Rashi says, what does it mean, Hashem Elokeinu? This God that is now our God, only Jews understand him. Hashem Echad, when Mashiach comes, is going to be, Bayom Ahu Yi Hashem Echad, Echad, 
everybody's going to recognize the existence of God. So Rashi says simply, what does it mean? Shema Yisrael Hashem Alokein Hashem Achad. Jews understand and feel that this God, which is now our God, Alokein Nu, eventually is going to be Hashem Achad. Everybody's going to, to know this God. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean you say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alokein Hashem Achad. God is one. The interesting thing over here is, in Hebrew, there's a word echod and there's a word yachid. In Baruch Shama, we say yachid chei ha'olam in melech. In Yishtabach, we say melech yachid chei ha'olam What's the difference between the word yachid and echod? So the simple definition of Lashon Kedosh, of Teda language, the difference between Echad and Yachid, Echad means one. When you say, I have one Siddur, that means there are more Siddurim. You have one, but there's more. Yachid means the only one. I have the only Siddur means there is no other Siddur but mine. Echad means like we have by creation. The first day it says Yom Echad. Second day Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi, Yom Revi. The first day, it doesn't say it was the only day. It was day one, day two, day three, day four. The word Yachid in Hebrew means the only one. There is nobody else. So the question is, why do we say Shema Yisra Hashem Alokeinu Hashem Echad? Which by definition means there might be more. Why don't we say Shema Yisra Hashem Alokeinu Hashem Yachid? He's the only one. There's nobody but him. Why don't we say that? So Chassidus is, and this is very profound and very important, and very basic. If there's a, no, one store in the neighborhood and the store is doing well, that doesn't mean the store is a good store. There's nobody else. There's no competition. What happens though if there is a competition? and the store is still number one. That's much greater greatness of the store than if the store is the only store. If you say there's only one doctor in the community and everybody goes to the doctor, that doesn't mean anything. There's nobody else to go to. He's the only doctor. That doesn't show the doctor's great. There's simply nobody else to go to. But if there would be a number of doctors, and this doctor is number one, that shows the greatness in the doctor. He's acknowledging that there are other gods. One second. So I'm, I'm coming to explain this. So what does Hashem Echad mean? It says in Shulchan Aruch, and this, by the way, when you say Shema, this is what you have to think about when you say, you have to think what the words mean. If you don't think what the words mean at the first Pasuk of Shema, you do not fulfill your obligation. You have to say that Pasuk again. Echad is Aleph, Ches, Dalit. Aleph is one, Ches is eight, Dalit is four. So Chazal tell us, what does Echad mean? There are seven heavens and earth. The Gemara says there's seven heavens and earth, which is eight. Dalit four represents the four corners of the world. Okay, so Ches and Dalit represent up and down and all over the world, basically includes the entire universe. What does the Aleph mean? Aleph Ches Dalid? That the Ches and the Dalid, the eight, the seven heavens and earth, and the four corners of the world are all subservient, all bottled to the Aleph, to the one God. In a certain respect, that's even greater than Yachid. 
Yachid means, when you speak about God, Yachid means there is no other God. There's nobody else. Nothing. He's the only thing. How would God do if there's competition? I don't know. I mean, I know, but you won't necessarily know. Echad brings out a deeper point. Echad brings out there is a world, there are worlds, there is directions, there is space and time, and yet everything is subservient to the Aleph, to the one God. In other words, I'm, I'm going to rephrase it with a different concept. In fact, we, I don't know if we're going to get into that, if we have time today, the way it's going. But it means like this. In Chassidus, that's called Bittel Hayesh and Bittel B'Metzias. There's two levels of subjugation to God, subservience to God. One is Bittel Hayesh. Bittel Hayesh means I give up my will for you. There's another concept. I'm going to explain both in a second. Bittel B'Metzias. Bittel B'Metzias means I don't exist. What you want is what I want. To give you an example of this, Siddhis calls it Eved Naaman and Eved Poshut. The faithful shepherd, the faithful servant, <clears throat> and the simple servant. You have this in analogy in today's world, we don't have slavery. But you have a boss and a worker. A boss calls in the worker and says, <clears throat> I want you to do this and this and this. The boss calls in the worker and says, do ABC. The worker doesn't really want to do it. His will is not to do it. His desire is not to do it. But he knows <laughs> this guy's the boss. He got to listen. So what does he do? He gives up what he wants for the sake of the boss, for the sake of the master. That means, Bittala Yesh means, I have a will of my own, but I give it up for you. But I have my own will, really, but I give it up to you. There's another level, Siddhis explains, like it says, by Meshra Rabbeinu, Bechol Beisi Ne'amonhu, Meshra Rabbeinu, what was called in Siddhis in Samach Vav, Eved Ne'amon. What does Evid Naman mean? Moshe Rabbeinu was so connected to God. If God wanted it, he wanted it. It wasn't that he gave up what he wanted for the sake of the master. If the master wanted it, that's what he wanted. Why? <clears throat> because by the servant, the only thing that exists is the master. He doesn't exist. Which by, which, by the way, what the Jews said by Matan Torah, Na'asa v'nishma, Na'asa v'nishma means, God, we don't, don't, we don't even tell us what you want. Whatever you want, we want. Sometimes you come to a guy and say, do me a favor. You say, let me hear what? You tell me it, I might want to do it, I might not want to do it. A deeper level, a higher level of bittu is God wants it, that's what I want. I have no me. That's the difference between Yochid. Yochid means only God exists. Nothing else exists. If nothing else exists, it's what's called bittu b'metzius. I don't exist, only God exists. The lower level of bittu, bittu layesh, means I do have my own will, I do have my own desires, but I give them up for God. Now, level-wise, level-wise, the Bittu B'Metzias, the faithful servant, is a much higher level. He doesn't exist, only God exists. But who has more Bittu who does active bittel more? The one that has his own will, and yet I give it up to you. In fact, as we will learn later in Tanya, 
the difference between a tzaddik, a tzaddik has no yetzahara. But as we're still going to learn, he doesn't have a yetzahara, he killed it. So he has no desire to do evil. So a lofty, such a very lofty level. The bainani that has a very, very powerful yetzahara, but doesn't give in to it in a certain respect that's greater than the tzaddik. The tzaddik has no desire to do evil. He reached such a closeness with God that if God wants it, he wants it. If God doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. The bainani is a level I have a yetzahara. I have really want, love to eat the pig and the treif and everything, do a forbidden thing. But I don't because God doesn't want me to do it. In the act of bitu, echad is greater than yachid. Yachid means only God exists, nothing else exists. So of course, if God, only God exists, you can't do anything wrong. That's why in the Shema, when we're speaking about the Jew being the testimony of the revelation of godliness in the world, we say the word echad, not yachid. Echad, we're telling God, listen, there is competition for you. There are seven heavens, and there is an earth. It's not Eno de Milvado, that only God exists, there is no world. That's Yachid. We're telling God in the Shema, what are we giving up our lives to? To tell God, we have, there is a world, there is a world out there, there are temptations out there. Yet, we are giving it up for you. In that respect, it's much greater. Another interesting thing the Mepharshim say, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, that says the first Hashem is for Avram Avinu, Elokeinu is Yitzchok Avinu, and the last Hashem is Yaakov Avinu. So you have all the three of us in, in those things. Now, what does it mean when you say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, it translated simply means God, our God, God is one. But why can't it just say God is one? What does it mean? Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. So again, Chassidus explains what is the difference between the name of Hashem and Elokim. We always say in Davni, Hashem Elokeinu. You make a bracha, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu. In davening, Hashem Elokeinu. We always say Hashem Elokeinu. God, our God. What is the difference between Yud Kei Hashem and Elokim? And in the Shema we're saying, Shema Yisrael, that means listen, understand, and feel that Hashem Elokeinu. What does it mean, Hashem Elokeinu? God is our God? Yeah, He's our God. What does it mean? In a deeper sense. So Chassidus explains, Hashem, not the way it's written in the, well, in the pseudonym, Yud Kei Vav Kei, right? The tetragram, as it's called in English. The Yud and the Hey and the Vav and the Hey. Yud Kei Vav Kei, as we pronounce it. Yud Kei Vav Kei means Mahave. Creator. That's what the word Yud Kei means. Not only does it mean creator, if you take the four letters, we learned this many times, take the four letters of Yud Kei and move them around and shift them around, you have three words. Haya, Hove, and Yihiyeh. Was, is, and will be. Past, present, and future simultaneously in one word. Now, if Hashem means creator, by definition, he's higher than the creation. Creation is limited. Creator, the one that made the limitation, obviously, is higher. He's higher than the creation. So what is Yudke Vavke? Yudke Vavke represents the infinite level of God. It's Ha Yehovah in the same word meaning 
it's above time that past, present, and future are simultaneously. It also means Mahava, which means creator. That represents the infinite level of God. Or in other words, that we learned a lot in Tanya recently, the level of Sovev Kol Almin, the unlimited, infinite level of God. What does Elohim mean? Elohim is the numerical value of 86, which is the same numerical of value of the word Hateva, the nature. Elohim represents nature, limitation. And that's why it's interesting. Yudke Vavke has no plural to it. Because in this infinite, there's no pluralism. There's only one God. Elohim, which represents world, diversity, limitation, strictness, severity. Over there, you have pluralism. How did God create the world? Beresh is bara Elohim, Vayomer Elohim, Vayomer Elohim, ten times Elohim. Why? Elohim represents world, nature. Yudke Vavke represents the supernatural, the infinite. Now, what does the Jew say in the Shema? The Jew says, Shema Yisrael, Jew, as we said before, Eid, Da, understand, feel that Havaya, the infinite, is really Alokino, our nature. The nature of the Jew is infinite. That's what the Pasuk Shema Yisrael means. Hashem Elokeinu, the infinite power of God, the infinite level of God, is what comes into our nature, and through this, it becomes, becomes Hashem Echad, that in the seven heavens, and in the world, and in diversity, and in pluralism, it's really the level of Yud Kei And that's what we say every time we make a bracha. Hashem Elokeinu, by us bringing down Baruch Ata, we learned many, bringing down Hashem, the infinite God, into Elokeinu, into our nature, into world, into Echod, then God becomes Melech Ha'ilam. Everybody in the world realizes God's greatness and God's existence. This is why the Shema is so important. In fact, some of the Mephoshim point, the connection between all of the Ten Commandments and the Parsha of Shema. What's the first commandment? I am God, you God. What's the first Pasuk of Shema? Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokein Hashem Echot. Corresponding with God, the God is one. So therefore, what is the concept of Shema Yisrael? The realization that everything in the world is subservient to God. But in a way, like we said before, not the Yochid way, that automatically everything is God, that we have a Yetzirah, there is a world that God gave us. God gave us this concept of, like we said before, that in the lowest of the lowest levels, over there we should make the dwelling place for God. And then we come to Biohafta Sashem Alokecha. Last week he mentioned the question of the Magid. How can Hashem command us to love? He can't turn on a love, but I don't want to elaborate. We just did the last, last class. We elaborated on it. So then the Magid said, and the Zuchim Magid said, you have to say Hashem Elokecha. I'm sorry. When you meditate into Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad, you have to, you will love God. Now what does it mean loving God? So it says, "Bechol levavcha, uvechol nafshecha, uvechol meodecha." In English, it's translated, "All your heart, all your soul, and all your might." What does that mean? The difference between levavcha 
nafshecha or meidecha are very different. Bechol levavcha, in Hebrew, the word for your heart is libcha, not levavcha with two bases. In Hebrew, how do you say your heart? Libcha. Why over here do we say levavcha? So the Gemara says in Brachis, it means with all your heart means two bases with the Yetzir Tov and the Yetzir Hara. The Shnei Yetzir Echa, with the you should love God with your Yetzir Tov and your Yetzir Hara. What does that mean? Based on what we just said, it makes sense. That the godly soul loves God, that's a given. The godly soul loves God because it's godly. What does Hashem want in the Shema? What does Hashem want for the Jews of being God's witnesses to reveal godliness in the world? Hashem wants us to have the Yetzirah loving God. That's an accomplishment. That the godly soul loves God, no big deal. It loves God. It's a part of God. It loves it. That Yetzirah should love God, that means you're getting the Yetzirah also to be bought, also to be nullified and subjugated and to be given over to God, that's a great accomplishment. But that's not enough. Then the Pasuk says, B'chol nafshecha, with all your soul. The Gemara says, what does that mean, B'chol nafshecha? Afilu neitales nafshecha. That even if they, they want to kill you, even if they want to take your life, you have to be ready to give it up. Especially for the three cardinal sins, idolatry, adultery, and murder. In fact, the Gemara tells the famous story when Rabbi Akiva, in the time of the destruction, second base, after the destruction, the Romans were torturing Rabbi Akiva's body. They were torturing him. And Rabbi Akiva was laughing. He was excited. He was happy. And the student said to him, Rebbe, how can you be excited and happy when they're torturing you to death? They didn't kill him. They tortured him to death. And Rabbi Kiva answered the students, my whole life, when I said, B'chol nafshecha, my whole life, I was waiting for this opportunity to give up my life for God. That was my goal in life, to give up my life, Mesidus Nefesh, for God. Now that I have the opportunity I shouldn't be excited. I finally reached my goal. But then that's not enough. You need to be b'chol me'edecha. Rashi says, Rashi says, what does it mean b'chol me'edecha? Not only with all your might, with all your money. And Rashi says, until you knew Jack Benny, you didn't understand this. It said, some people love their money more than their life. And some people love their life more than the money. So the Torah says, whether it's your life or all your money, you have to love God with all your money. That's the simple meaning. Chassidus explains, Ma'idecha means, Ma'id means infinite. What does Ma'idecha mean? To serve God, breaking your barriers, breaking your limitations. The third step is, number one, the Yetzirah should love God. Secondly, you're ready to give up your life for God. And the third thing is, to go above and beyond your nature. What does it mean? It doesn't mean to kill yourself. We learned already many times, today, there's no, not yet, I don't know what the world's coming to, there's no decrees against Yiddishkeit. So what do we have Mesidus Nefesh today? Jews in Russia had Mesidus Nefesh. In the Inquisition, they had Mesidus Nefesh. Jews throughout the world, throughout generations, had a lot of Mesidus Nefesh for Yiddishkeit. Today, what Mesidus Nefesh do we have? So Chesidus explains it, that today Mesidus Nefesh doesn't mean giving up your life. Nefesh means will. A nafshi ve'amazeh. There's a psukim that Chassidus brings as a proof that the word nefesh doesn't only mean soul; it means will. 
Bechol nafsha chabib. What mesidus nefesh do we have today? Mesidus nefesh today means, like we said before, I give up my will for God. I give up my will for God. I want to do something. God doesn't want me to do it. I'm not going to do it. That's Bechol nafsha the Chome Decha is much deeper. The Chome Decha means that even in the good that you do, you have to go infinitely. You have to go above and beyond your nature. You learn one minute a day, learn two minutes a day. You give one dollar to Tzedakah, give two dollars to Tzedakah. Whatever you do, like we learned many times, you see it from Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt, meaning breaking your barriers to get out and go above and beyond your nature. That's what B'chol Me'edecha means. And therefore, we find an interesting thing. The Gemara says, in the first parsha of Shema, it says, B'chol Levavcha, B'chol Nafshecha, U'b'chol Me'odecha. In the second parsha of Shema, it says, B'chol Levavchem, Plural, uvachol nafshechem, plural. It doesn't say the third name, chol meitchem. And the Gemara says that the first parsha of Shema, the Jews are called Ace and the Ritzay Nation Mokim, they're doing the will of God. And the second parsha of Shema, which speaks about the Jews sometimes rebelling, is Ain Ace and the Ritzay Nation I'm not doing the will of God. And Chsidis explains what's the difference between the first two. The first parsha has me'odecha, which is above and beyond your nature, breaking your nature. And then the second parsha of Ahayim Shemaya doesn't say me'etchem. If it doesn't break in your nature, if you're not breaking your nature, then you're not serving God. You're not doing the will of Hashem properly. Hashem wants us to go out of the boundaries. You see us in time every day. To go out of the boundaries of limitation to accomplish much more than... Um, than ever before. Okay, a few more things. The Gemara says that Jews are greater than the angels. Where do we see this? When the angels say God's name, they say Kodesh, 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 Hashem Tzvoi Tzmlei Chalad is greater. When do they say God's name? After three words. Kodesh, 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 Hashem. The Jews say God's name after two words. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu. Meaning, Jews are much closer to Hashem. They have the ability to say God's name, meaning to reveal godliness after two words, and the Malachim have it only after three. Okay, another interesting thing that ever explains is getting late. But the Rebbe says like this, at the end of the, the parish of Shema, it said, the Dibarta Bam, you should speak in the words of Taylor, when? Uh, the, one second, I, I just don't want to say it by her. Okay, here's a Chumash. Um, here. Okay, the mitzvah of learning Taylor, when is it? The shift the Chob Secha, when he is sitting in the house. Lecht chavaderech, you're traveling on the road. Uve shach b'cha, when you go to sleep. Uve kumecha, when you get up. Okay? So it says in the Pasuk, four times when you have to learn Teda. The shinantam levanecha, teach it to your children. The dibar tabam, like we said, bracious emei masay tereshe b'tzav tereshe b'alpeh. And it says four times. The shiv t'cha b'veisecha, when you're living in the house, when you're traveling, when you go to sleep, when you go you get up. The Rebbe explains, very in the Rebbe explains, these are four stages in a person's life. The shift that your home, that refers, what's the home of the neshama? In Ganeiden, before it comes down into the world. The Risham in Gan Eden is sitting and learning Torah. But that's at home. The Risham is at home. Lech Tchav the Rebbe says, refers 
to the journeys of life. When you're traveling, where is the Neshama traveling? Neshama travels down from Gan Eden into this world. What is the world like we spoke two weeks ago? Masay, the journeys, plural of the Jew. From the minute you're born until you die, it's the journeys. So you have to learn Torah during the journeys of your life. Then it says, B'shoch b'cha, when you go to sleep, that refers to when we pass away. When you pass away. U'v'kumecha, when you get up, the Rebbe says, that's Chiesa Mason, the resurrection of the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that will be the ultimate Torah, Torah Hashem Mashiach, that will be the ultimate Torah. So the Rebbe says, that these four stages of when you're home and traveling and going to sleep and getting up actually represents, encompasses the whole life of a person. Before the neshama comes down, they're learning teda. In life, they're learning teda. When they die, they learn teda. When they go back up, so the Pasik is speaking about all the times that a Jew needs to be able to learn teda and to study teda. And again, like we said before, it's time already, but you could give a shir on the first parsha of Shema for weeks and weeks and weeks, but uh, this week will be enough. I want to remind everybody that Wednesday, don't forget, there'll be no Zoom because it's Tisha B'Av. The fast begins at 7.56, and um, in Chabad of Beverly Hills, we'll have a 6 o'clock minion on Wednesday. Uh, Marv will be at 8.25 Wednesday night. Thursday morning, they will have a 6 o'clock minion, 7.30 minion, and 9 o'clock minion. And Mincha in the afternoon will be at 7. Everybody should have, let me see one second, there's two chats, let me see if there's anything I need to answer. Um, okay, but uh, well, well, that those questions are not uh, really relevant to what we discussed tonight. Anyway, okay, everybody should have a meaningful fast, an easy fast, and Hashem should help us, we shouldn't have to fast. Amen. Okay, all the best. Amen. Amen. Take care. Bye, Rob. Thanks so much. Take care. Guys, to Chile. Bye, bye, Rob. Everything good here. Thank you.